welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting for Wednesday, July the 7th, 2021. Uh, do I have a motion to go into executive session? Yes. Cl it's closed session. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and Section 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointed employees over whom this public body has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to negotiations and to perform an administrative function. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes out 5 up. We'll be back at 6 o'clock. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome back to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education for July the 7th, 2021. Can we stand for the pledge? <clears throat> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to take this moment uh, to give our regards to the family of Warren Butler that passed away. He was a board member for Queen Anne's County in the 70s. I think he served for 12 years. Um, just for a little nostalgia, he was here after I graduated. So I was in 71. But this is a picture of some of our people that he did uh, give it a diploma to. Uh, I will not mention any names or dates. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we have a approval of the minutes for June the 16th. Uh, everybody's had a chance to look at them. Halfway down on the first page, uh, it does say vote 5-0. I think that should be 4-0 since uh, Michelle, you weren't here. I was not here. So everything else is, I think it's, it was just 4 0 4 and I think on here it just got written 5-0, so we could just make that change. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the minutes with the correction? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Okay. Uh, do you have minutes of closed session for uh, June the 16th? Ever had a chance to look at those? No motion. Make a motion to approve the minutes uh, from okay. the closed session for June 16, 2021. For discussion, all those in favor, aye. 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 Okay, uh, do I have appro uh, approval for the agenda for this evening? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to amend the agenda to remove 10.01 closed meeting citation from the agenda? So moved, I have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the amended agenda? Second. All those have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yes, we do. This evening we have two recognitions. We're going to start with the Energizer Bunny, which is new and exciting for me. Mm -hmm. And, and um, Michelle McNeil is here, and she would like to recognize. So on behalf of Michelle, I'd like to read what she has said about our newest Energizer Bunny. So Dr. Salins, normally no. we all go down there and I, we all stand so that we can take sure. a picture. Is that all right to do again? It's not. That's okay. fine. Okay. There's okay. A, okay. Awesome. Okay. Since we have people in the audience yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, you want me to take the mic? Yes. <laughs> That's trying to turn it on. All right. So are we ready? So these are some wonderful things that I would like to say. Ms. Adams is the administrative secretary for two supervisors who oversee many different programs. She arrives early each day and immediately checks in to see what needs to be completed. If she sees that you are overwhelmed, she is right there to lend a helping hand. Kim is known for saying, I will not let you down. Her enthusiasm and dedication to helping others is beyond measurable. Just this past month, she was gone above and beyond her work day to assist with preparing carrying summer school materials in order to have all the materials in school, schools on time. She takes a lead role in collecting data for the migration and Title III programs along with other major components of the migrant summer program. So she is very fortunate to work with someone who has this level of dedication in her job and is always willing to do more. So the CNI are very fortunate to have Kim on their team. So. I, I like this is all new for me. I love the Energizer Bunny thing. It's so exciting. If it gets loose, it really will be. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Can I have one more? One more? 
I just like to say that I do enjoy uh, working with CNI, and I work with great, amazing people. And I tell you, Queen Anne's County Board of Education is the bomb. Um, <laughs> we really get a lot of things right, and we all work together to make things happen. So thank you. Michelle wanted to take this opportunity to nominate Jennifer. For those of you who may not know when Jen Bode is, she is the grant specialist for Queen and County Public Schools, and she is her go-to whenever she has finance questions or grant questions. Mrs. Bode is quick to respond to questions and is always willing to meet to assist with grant applications or to provide updates on budgets. She goes above and beyond to support supervisors and schools to make sure everyone is staying within the budget and maintaining the guidelines of specific grants. There are many times that she will stay late or come in over the weekend to make sure that everything is completed. Her dedication, ability to multitask, and her reliability are all that make her a shining star. I am fortunate, meaning Michelle, to have that, <laughs> that her position um, is allowed to work with such a special person and a wonderful person that Jen is. So if you see a little light, she said, coming down from the end office in the finance hallway, you will know that that shine is coming from our shining star, which is Jen Bode. So, Genders board involvement, uh, Ms. Harper. Sure, thank you. I'd like to welcome Dr. Salins to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Thank you for being here and just grateful, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I have a few more thank yous, uh, so please indulge me. I'd like to have a thank you sent out to all the staff involved in finalizing the negotiated agreements with all the units. I personally am very, very grateful for all the time and effort that made this possible. It's an end of a school year, it's the beginning of a school year, and I would like to thank all of our sponsors, both businesses businesses, and individuals who have given their full support to Queen Anne's County Public Schools, especially during this, you know, the pandemic. Um, thank you so much. And lastly, I would like to thank Janet Pauls for coming back to help the system that she truly loves. We truly appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Janet. As far as attendance for things, I did attend the parade for the varsity softball and lacrosse teams at Queens County High School. Um, those girls worked really hard and did an awesome job in some very unusual terms for school. Um, and with that said, I want to thank our students and our parents for hanging in there and making it work and supporting your teachers and your staff along the way. So thank you. Ellen? I just want to ditto what Michelle was saying. Yes, the parade was wonderful. It was great to see the kudos on um, line. Very much looking forward to a pass to see all of these games in person um, next year. So yeah, great job, everyone. 
Yeah, just to echo uh, what every, everybody else has said, and I uh, hope everybody had a great 4th of July. It's nice to see everybody actually in this room together. It's actually kind of <laughs> weird, but uh, <laughs> after uh, so much time, you know, being spread out and everything, and um, yeah. uh, lots of smiles and all good. Let's go. We got summer school coming, yeah. and uh, I know Dr. Salins is on the ball, and and uh, that's it. Yeah. And I want to echo the thing with Dr. Salins. It's been a, a pleasure the last couple, two or three weeks. I know you've come into a lot and been very busy. So uh, keep up the good work. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Also, would like to uh, talk about graduation. It was a very difficult year this year for our seniors. But I felt graduation personally was one of the nice ones I've ever attended. It was at 10 o'clock in the morning. It wasn't too hot. It went with any hitches. I was at Queen Anne's. I think some of our other members were at um, Ken Island. Um, it went very well. I think afterwards the parents had time to see everybody. It wasn't late at night on a Friday. Um, I can remember the days when you did Queen Anne's one night and Ken Island the other. And one was Ken Island on Friday night wasn't as much fun coming back to the traffic. Um, so I, I give kudos to both our principals of both high schools and to all the staff that made that made that work. It was a, a very nice thing, and I think the seniors deserve that. And uh, it's been a tough year, and we w wish them well. Sales. Yes, so I just thank you so much for the opportunity. It's really, we hit the ground running, great people to work with. Um, so, and I, kudos to the, the teams. Um, the parade was fun. I got to ride with the lion. So I just want to <laughs> just say that that was a privilege of mine. So, um, and then I want to take an opportunity to ask Carla to come up because I want to recognize Carla. Um, she has done an amazing job of filling in multiple hats um, with multiple responsibilities, more than any other person probably for the last several, several months, um, nearly a year. And so I just want to say thank you for you. You've been, um, you know, that Energizer Bunny, that shining star. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next part, I'm going to ask for a little bit of help um, in kind of presenting this part of it. So um, each each month, I'd like to implement something new, like a snapshot on everything that schools are doing, um, just everything, whether it be in food service, whether it be in transportation, facilities, um, instruction, professional development, whatever it is that's going on um, month to month. We just want to have some type of visual representation for the board members. And so this will be a standing agenda item. Um, as long as the board feels that that is something that, that they would like to see. Um, so this month it's kind of under superintendent, but it really will fall to the assistant superintendent um, to compile everything and bring, bring everything together. So I think that Janet, ha um, Jackie has it up or somewhere so they can see. Yes, can you do that? I have to go there. Oh, sure, can you do that? Sure, 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 sure. sorry. I have an advantage because I have it on my laptop already. It's there. We actually have some supervisors here, so supervisors, feel free to jump in when you see something that, that you all have been working on to accomplish this summer. We've had a ton of professional development for our staff members. We have um, summer schools been up and running and going fantastic. And so um, if you just want to go to presentation mode, I don't know if you can do that. Uh, I don't know that we can do presentation mode from here, but we'll see. There we go. Perfect. Thank you, Jackie, so much. And we'll just go to the next slide that starts with everything. Oh, you got it. Okay. So in instruction, and again, Janet said she would help me with this just to kind of go through, but you can see that um, these are highlighting some of the um, different elementary schools and what they've been working on as it relates to curriculum writing. Lots of curriculum development going on across the district. Lots of people working very hard. We have staff members who have had a heck of a year um, with COVID still making that commitment to be here and do curriculum development. So you can see the different um, areas that they were, were working on. More instruction with the next slide. Again, students learning about the Olympics. You can see um, 44 students, three teachers, and four pairs of rocking out summer school. <laughs> so just some little comments about each school and what they're doing for summer school. 
I'm moving on, you still have more curriculum development, world language. We had seven world language teachers here. Um, elementary art and music worked over 90 hours to, create, to do new curriculum and writing for K-5. Um, music and theater were here. They um, created a new middle school course, visual arts with the new middle and high school art curriculum. Again, over 90 hours with those teachers working. And then you can see in the area of math, K-8, some hands-on centers that were developed for summer school for 3-5. And then moving in um, further, you can see the eighth grade had their send-off, which was a drive-through send-off which um, parade that I think went extremely well. Um, then we hit some summer school pictures with, you can see our students well engaged, look at them, no masks, they're um, learning and in, engaged and having some fun with that. And as you know, that our, our littles are actually at the high school, so that was quite an adjustment for them to be at the high school. So they've done very, very well, um, and they're you know well into their summer school. And then again, you can see all the different summer school program that we have throughout the district. Um, you know, we are almost, believe it or not, coming to the end of our session one, um, which ends on July 15th before we move into session two. Our migrant program's up and running, um, but you can see just all kinds of opportunities for our students to um, recoup some of that learning loss from this past year. Moving into facilities, they did some painting um, at, at Manapeak and it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. The team has done a really, really um, great job. And then food service, uh, again, just a shout out that we are doing our summer um, program on Wednesdays. Um, and then this is amazing. We had um, our food service program was actually awarded the um, the No Kid Goes Hungry Award, which is really an amazing feat because that's national, you know, that's a national organization. So that was really uh, quite impressive. And then athletics, uh, the board actually touched on a couple of these, but you can see some individual students who actually um, were medalists as well and, and should be recognized as well. And then we want to end um, with this was really special. They actually um, planted a tree in honor of Jamie. And I know that I personally didn't know him, but I've heard so many amazing things about him and just what a great person he was. So just, a, you know, the last part of um, be the good. And I think we need to keep that, that trend going and what he would say to students and staff all the time. Um, so some really amazing things going on already this summer. And stay tuned because it's not over. We have a whole lot more to come um, as we finish up our summer months. So Dave Brown always said great things are happening in Queen Anne's County. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Acting Deputy Superintendent Janet Pauls. Um, I think a lot of the things have been hit on, but um, Dr. Salins and I did visit every school, um, which was amazing, and Mr. Smith um, joined us as well, too. We have um, done numerous interviews, <laughs> and it's been fun. Um, I've been working on evaluations. We've had exec team meetings, CNI meetings, meetings with principals. Um, Dr. Salins brought all the supervisors, all the principals together, talked about what was going well and where we needed some improvement and as you said summer school is going extremely well um, kudos to Mr. Kintop for all of his work in organizing it it's been a massive task first time we've ever done something of this sort but we also have visited the summer school sites as well and um, it's been interesting to see the, the littles as um, Dr. Salen said in the big school but they've done well and um, it's been my pleasure to serve again <laughs> so um, up the good work. Oh, thank you. Thank, and thank, uh, personally, thank you for all you've done mm -hmm. and will be doing. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Um, next meeting, we will be recognizing our student board members that were here this past year. And in the fall, we will be uh, having two new members uh, join us. Uh, citizens' participation. Anybody on it? I read it anyway. Do we need to read it? Do you want to read it if we're not going to have Do we need to read it anyway, even though there's no... Oh, there's no participation. No, we don't. We don't no. buy that. No. no. Here, there's nobody here to sign up for public comment. Okay, we're going to skip our break since we're moving on. Our human resources report, uh, the board members had a chance to review that. 
Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the human resource report as presented in closed session? Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, let's have, let's have a roll call on that. Okay. Board members, please if I might call your name. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Schipanelli? Yes. Ms. Bursette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have five in the affirmative. Aries 5-0. Dr. Salins, would you have anything to add to this? I do. I just wanted to say, there's some different appointments in here that I really would like to recognize. <clears throat> It's been um, nearly a year since we've had an assistant superintendent, and it was a long process to go through interviews and second interviews and um, really uh, great candidates, but one definitely rose to the top, and that is our very own Amy, and we would like to congratulate you and welcome you. Congratulations. Um, and then it's been, you know, quite some time that um, that COO position has been open that we just talked that Carla has been wearing multiple hats to make that continue and, and seamlessly flow. Um, but we have hired, um, Sid Pinder will be returning um, on the 19th. And so um, thank you to the board for that consideration. Um, again, great candidates and hard decision. Um, but we know that um, Sid is excited to be coming back on the team. And then there's two other positions I'd like to recognize. One is a communication specialist, and that's Lane at Power Waters. He's coming from Graysonville. You're going to see Lana everywhere. <laughs> You'll see her everywhere. She'll be taking pictures, asking questions, taking quotes. And, you know, her main goal will really be to promote the system. And so once we move to get a new website up and running and we'll be able to post um, just really great information um, multiple times a day, she's going to be exhausted because there's so many good things going on that she's going to be able to capture that from instruction to sports and everything from food service to facilities and such. So we're excited to have you on board. Um, thanks for being here tonight. And then the the other person is a new executive assistant, which is Carrie Dennis, who's coming to us from our community, um, and she will be starting on the 19th as well. So we want to welcome her, even though she is not here this evening. Um, we'd like to welcome her as well. So, okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 702 transfer request, Jane. Sit here. Or you can sit. Whatever's coming up for you. Yeah. You're, 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 you're there. Sit this set up. Yeah. Sit there. You're there. Okay. Okay. And you have a microphone now. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board member. Tonight we bring before you a transfer request. Since the budget of, uh, approval of FY22, we bring before you budget amendment number one for the unrestricted for additional costs for salary enhancements totaling $373,819. Um, we bring this before you for approval. Um, any questions? I, I have a few, if you don't mind. So, the reduction of other compensation, the forty-three thousand. We didn't lose anyone. We didn't lose any positions. Right. We have uh, correct. That has been an open account for the last couple of years, thirteen seventy and thirteen seventy-one, with no movement. But it's been a budgeted amount for forty thousand in salaries, and then the benefit piece takes it to that. Um, 43,219. I mean, I see we're losing an EL tutor and we're losing the drug and alcohol prevention instructor. Right. In, and order, those... in order to get that to, to balance, the reduction of the EL tutors um, is a reduction of funds in our unrestricted account. Currently under um, the state tutoring funds, we have well over 730,000 for our grades four and up over these next two years. In addition to TSI again for this year of 116,365, we have a meeting that we're gonna be with uh, the uh, superintendent along with other staff members to identify the tutoring needs. And we feel that those funds would um, be available for us to use instead of the unrestricted funds on that allocation. And the non-instructional equipment? instructional equipment it's a budgeted amount in operations it it varies from year to year but normally you are used to seeing any type of op operation equipment actually been a budgeted item that's taken to the board as far as for or taken to the budget committee for approval so and can I ask you on, under your budget source unrestricted funds should that not say 2022 yes you can update say 2022 okay 
because it's not coming from 21, it's coming from 22. Correct. Okay, that does, I'm gonna make sure we had that correction in there. Yes, yes. So the net effect to the overall unrestricted budget is gonna be zero with, with these proposed reductions. Uh, thank you. I was just grateful that we weren't losing anyone, anyone in any positions. Well, I will um, make an item of note here that in, in the FY22 budget request, it was requested and approved for a drug and alcohol profession instructor. Uh, we are going to try to absorb that internally and see how it goes on, on that. Yeah, because we did have that in, in our budget. Right. Last year it wasn't um, util as utilized position due to COVID, so um, we're going to try to absorb it this year and see how it goes. So we will not be losing that position. Right now it's out of the budget. Right now it's, it's being taken out right now. So if we cannot absorb that, what's the plan? Because there is a lack of adolescent services in Queen Anne's County. Right, and there's other, we actually just met um, with Michael Page today or yesterday, it all kind of blended together, but um, looked at other opportunities of what we can use with ESSER funds to, to support that program in and of itself um, within the school. Okay. So, you know, that could be um, a bucket. I mean, it certainly would be supported through that, and um, that would be like three years. So it gives us a little breathing room to see, um, you know, our budget may be different next year, so we may be able to slide it back in the budget, but if we can't, we have other means that we think that we can pull together a plan. Michael, did you want to add anything? Okay. So you're making that a three-year position through the... Mm, no, oh. just um, just a year. Year, so that we can okay. reevaluate. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank so you. This position is the only point of contact in this county adolescents have to any prevention services or drug counseling. And we have it because health department doesn't want it, social services doesn't want it in their budget, so they put it on to schools. And my angst on that is we are, we are supplying education. I feel like that is a social services or a health department um, right. position, well, which, you know, many we'll bring that up with the county um, commissioners. Many school districts actually filter that through either their, like, PE health, meaning the health part of their PE, um, or they put it through their sciences. And so that's how they're able to address some of those issues. Um, that's not necessarily how it's done here. And so we are, like, evaluating those um, practices here to see if we could weave it in, blend it in. Um, I think we're gonna struggle with that. That's why we thought about some other opportunities to be able to pull in some other resources okay. um, to see um, what we can do to add. But for right now, yes, for this this school year that it's not in the budget, and we're gonna to try to do that other means, um, and then we'll reevaluate at the end of the year. Is there a backup plan for evaluation? If, if this is being filtered through science and PE, that's an education proponent, but where's the evaluation piece? Because that has to be a licensed personnel. I don't know that. There's, um, yeah, thanks, Mr. Evans. Good evening, Mr. Smith, Dr. Sam's board members. For the record, I'm Matt Evans, Supervisor of Student Services. And I think there's confusion of the two positions. That one position is for the, the bot and life skills, which is actually taught in the classroom prevention, not the, the person that we were uh, employing through the opioid prevention grant that was providing um, evaluations and counseling, both individual and group. Okay. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that wasn't the person that we were talking about. The the first one that's for your the life. Yes. Okay. Right. So yes. The two life separate things. Uh, okay. Yes. Two separate things. Okay. So the prevention person will still be there. The evaluating piece. So no. Well. So we have a mental health coordinator who's a licensed clinical professional counselor and can in fact provide those evaluations and referrals, et cetera. Okay. And, so we're not losing that. We're not losing that position. No. We in fact, we're yes. But that's yes. Thank you. So I, and I, I might have confused you by looking at the two different programs because we definitely didn't meet on that program. We met on the life skills program, which is preventative it's, for students. Okay. Yeah, it was just a concern because, sure. like I said, there's there's no resource in this case. And a lot of additional training was done this summer with Matt and the counselors for social emotional learning, learning and knowing the triggers. And um, so we feel like you have a much better handle on how to identify those students who may be in need of some additional services. And we have additional professional development um, as well with um, some additional funding but that was coming, I uh, think it was $108,000. Right, through a supplemental grant through the state, it's for trauma and mental health. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. Good questions. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I, I think it can't fall on best ear, but like Michelle says, but you know, more and more stuff's being put on the school system. We, you know, our lead nurse used to be in the health department, was transferred to us and to put in our budget. You know, commissioners paid for six months, one cost, but then we had to absorb it. And when we have to absorb, you know, with our 86% of our money going for salaries, and when we start, you know, we're doing all, meeting our obligations there, it, it's, it's an issue. And also, it's got, remember, it, the county is going to be expecting us in a year or two to pick up the um, Well, I'm hoping CET. the CTE will not come to us, right? Oh, I'm the CTE no, but I mean, coordinator. But it, it's, it's, it's functions of the school system, but it's functions that people keep asking for services that are falling on our system. And for us to keep our wage competitive, enhanced, what we're seen to be doing all the time, it's, uh, it's going to be challenging. And we've just been through this budget, and um, it's balanced, but not fully balanced completely on the way I'd like to see and I think all our board members would like to see it along with uh, Dr. Salins. Um, you know, when you start using fund balances and things like that, it's it's going to be a tricky thing. It's a slippery slope. Um, and uh, it's something we need to start working on today, not just next spring. So, Mr. Smith, may I, add, may I make a motion to approve budget amendment number one for FY22 for the Board of Education? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries 5 0. Okay, the next thing up I have in front of me is REAL license K through 5. Um, Janet, is that, or is that you? Bridget Scott was Bridget Passon, supervisor of ELA, and Mrs. McNeil was also here, but Bridget's going to take the, the load off of her for today. The teamwork. Yes. Good evening, President Smith and Dr. Salins, members of the board. It is so nice to see you all up on the <laughs> dais and maskless and smiling. So this is until the boys had to come up. This has been a very exciting, happy meeting. So um, I'm thrilled to be here for my annual plea um, for digital licensing for grades K through 12, as well as consumables for our high school English classes. Um, so before you and Dr. Salem, do you, do you want me to bring up each form or, okay, bring it up, okay. So I am item 7.03, um, both math and English are in here, but mine are first. So the first one listed is for the elementary ELA licenses uh, for the uh, $84,105.30 from the operating budget. And so I'm seeking approval to purchase those. Um, should may I, I? May I ask Ms. Towers that operating 22 be right. put on this document before it's sent through? Thank you. And this is K through five. Yes. And it wonders textbooks, right? Wonders digital licenses. Yep, we have all the textbooks and readers already. So this is, is this a one year contract? This is one, one year contract right now, yes. This is something we're doing, is it? This is, we are hoping to pilot three options in the fall. I'm still waiting on that budget decision to see if that's possible. So until we know that, we go a year to year contract with, with wonders. I have looked at their three and four year options and they're, and they're way too steep for what we're up against right now. And we've had wonders for several years now. Yes, since 2015. So these are just supplements to the program that are, are we've been using them for years. It's not anything new. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nothing new. Yeah, it gives the kid, the, each of the students and the teachers a digital license. Mm -hmm. So should we go level by level or should I present them all first and then vote? Yeah. And the, your, the one you're requesting now is for 8410530. Yes. Does the board have any other questions on that one? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the purchase of licenses for the digital component of the Wonders textbook <coughs> for grades K through five, fiscal impact of $84,105.30, budget source operating budget 2022. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Aye, aye. Ayes have it. Okay, now the next one Thank we're going to be going to is the high school English. The next one is the middle school digital licenses. Gotcha. So this is for um, six through eight from our collections um, text. And again, this is do just digital licenses. Uh, and this is for much less, uh, $36,837.50 from the operating 22 budget. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the purchase of licenses for digital component of the collections textbooks for grades six through eight, fiscal impact dollar amount of $36,837.50, budget source operating budget 2022. I have 
a motion. Do I have a second? Second. A motion is seconding for further discussion. All those in favor, aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. And the last one. You're getting expensive, Bridget. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Please don't hold that against me. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so my last request is for our high school courses. Now this one's steep. These are for licenses and consumable texts for grades nine through 12. Um, and this is for um, $57,816.06 from the operating um, budget for fiscal year 22. Mr. Smith, may I make the motion to accept the purchase of the licenses and consumables to support all high school English courses, fiscal input dollar amount of $57,816.06, budget source operating budget 2022. I have a motion to have a second. Second. All those in any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Would you, you have a, a good summer for math? Drive a oh, will I drive the bus for you for math? I absolutely will. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So Ms. Smith could not be with us um, today, but she did send a summary of um, the items that she's asking for. And um, what's the first one there? It is the... 180. That's 180 renewal. And we've been using um, this platform, the license, for quite some time. Uh, it's being used as an intervention for middle school um, students. And it's a very viable program, and we've seen great success with it. So we are asking for approval. Mr. Smith, may I make and a motion? And this is coming out of ESNER funds, ESNER 2 funds? Yes, correct. ESNER 2. Yes, ESNER 2. Okay. Mr. Smith, Sorry. may I make a motion to accept uh, the approval of the purchase of the Math 180 Renewal Intervention Resources, grades 6, 7, and 8, fiscal impact dollar amount of $31,900.08, budget source ESSER 2 grant funds? I have a motion to have a second. Second. One other question. Um, is This is for one year. Yes. Yes. And... As to two funds, we, we're good for at least this year, maybe another year for that if we had to. And then we have uh, the 20, we have as two and then as for three. Okay. So we're, we're, we're good. We're good, okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. Then the last one is um, Agile Minds, um, which again um, supports the math curriculum. And it's actually the resources that are needed for um, grades six and seven, geometry and algebra, algebra two. And we have been using um, this for quite some time to support the teachers and the students. And um, we're asking for approval for, again, one year. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the contract renewal of Agile Minds? Fiscal impact dollar amount of $91,508, budget source ESSER 2 grant funds. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Passer. Thank you, welcome. Thanks for driving. Thanks, Secretary. Yes, have good a summer. good evening. Thank you. Thank you. reports. We've all had a chance to look at them. This is for the ending 6.30. So if, is this our final or it's going to still be still things out there standing? Correct. This is as of period 12. We still have period 13 open. So basically all the bills in June will be um, paid in July that we'll have to go ahead and, and ex expense back in, into school year 21. So this, this little number in the second to last column will shrink a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it will. Well, I appreciate the fact that we've only used 94% of the budget. <laughs> and uh, just an item of note that uh, you'll see under the detail, there's one or two account numbers that you see in the negative that we'll bring before you in August as a final budget adjustment to close out fiscal year 21. So all the ones that have like one, oh, any, well, anything over 100, yes. you'll bring back to us. Um, correct, anything that has a, that negative. negative. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to send that over to the county commissioners. Um, actually, sure. um, it, the transfer request tonight, and then again, at one in August for 21. So at the end of next month, we probably will have our year-end number of where we're going to be. 
Any other questions by board? Uh, thank you for this SR2 detail. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I just truly appreciate it. It's so, I mean, it's, it's just wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sands has asked that we provide that each month for you for your review and to let you know, too, SR3 is now available. Uh, the application is due July 30th. And the allocation amount has changed. It's increased slightly. We're up to $6.8 million. And we literally just got that. Was that this past week, the 20th? Yeah, I mean, I'm the second or something. So, the so by the end of this month, we have to earmark where this money mm -hmm. category, where it's be going and things of that nature. Or SR3. 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 And that's three years? Correct. Okay. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have policies for second re read out. And Mrs. Boss wasn't able to be here. Um, Do you I don't have know. any comments on any of them? I have comments. Okay. Um, it, just to um, let you know, we did look online this morning and there was no comment as of this morning from the public online. Right. Yes. So the first one we bring before you tonight is 404 policy, policy for educator certification, along with the regulation for that. This is actually current in policy. It basically mirrors what is required in Comar. The only question, uh, comment I had was uh, two under the policy statement for the policy and then um, F in the regulation. Because we were changing it from teacher to educator, we kept teachers for the certificates are kept in each educator's file, but then it says as long as a teacher is employed in the county. So I thought we maybe could change it to something like the duration of county employee. Absolutely. And, take a, and the same thing for F on the regulation is the same thing. A teacher is employed in the county. So for the duration of county employee, it seemed as if it would take away the teacher and keep okay. to the educator. Okay, Good we'll call. definitely Thank make that modification. Yeah, you can keep your eyes on it a hundred times and not yeah, it, right? like that, so I appreciate <laughs> I was learning that in our last meeting, our last policy <laughs> right. meeting, yes. I really appreciate that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So these, this is just to clarify, these are going back out for a second review? Are they getting? I think this no, is we're, the we're asking for right. approval to these are all right. approved yeah, tonight. These have already had right. second. Okay. Yeah. So this is um, our second review and approval. Do we approve them as a group, or um, should we do 404 first if, and then approve that, or not, how do we? We have quite a few of them. So has everybody looked at, reviewed all of them that are? Mm -hmm. I don't have any questions on any of them. I do. You do? Yes. So, okay. Let's let's do. Um, I said you want to just do the 404s mm -hmm. together. We got 404. 404 like together, the policy yeah, and the them. regulation. Is everybody straight on the 404? Mm -hmm. Any questions there? No. You don't have a motion. Go ahead. Is this going to be with a change in the verbiage on the? Okay. But it's so need to change. But that's going to be a motion. So a motion to accept 404 policy educator certification and its coordinating regulation of 404.1 with changes for approval. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Now 423 uh, policy of personal records. This is a new, new um, policy that's been brought this year. A policy basically states how HR is maintaining retention of confidential personnel records. So everything, as you know, in red is new language. So the whole policy is a new policy. on that. No. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept 4.23, I mean, excuse me, 423 policy personnel records with its coordinating regulation of 423.1. Second for approval. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. 528 policy title number four. Nine. Title nine. Title nine, I'm sorry, it's an X, not a V. <clears throat> Do 
Good evening. Matt Evans again, Supervisor of Student Services. Here for any questions for the Title IX policy, which was uh, ultimately the United States Department of Education updated the Title IX regulations that went into effect in August 2020. This new policy and regulation reflects those changes. Any questions regarding this policy? I do. On the policy on, under two, the policy statement, on D, when it was saying it's a violation of this policy concerning all Title IX and Title VII, I was not sure why we were including Title VII because that uh, encompasses a lot of different things besides the, se the sexual um, it, it, discrimination. <clears throat> and I wasn't sure why it was a part of this Title IX. Uh, as part of, in Q, you can see it defined as the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which was the federal anti-discrimination mm -hmm. statute that prohibits sexual harassment in the workplace. I thought it included other things, so okay, that's... It does, but okay. it, it, it's qualified in paragraph D when it says alleging discrimination based on sex. Okay. So it's Title VII in regards to sexual discrimination. Okay. And then E, the sexual harassment is a particular form of gender discrimination. I would, I think I was unclear on what that <clears throat> meant. Is that in the regulation? That's in the policy. E, it's the next one down. Um, what it was meant by, so it's a particular form of gender discrimination. Because it seemed as if it was, oh, I'm not sure what was meant by that. So I don't want to put anything, any meaning on there. But what does that mean exactly? Sorry, I, I still need to find it's it. It's on your policy under policy, policy statement. It, okay. It's E. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What page are you on? It's the page first one. page. First it's page under the policy statement. Yeah, and it just says sexual harassment is a particular <clears throat> form of gender statement. discrimination, and I wasn't sure what was meant by that. I, I couldn't give an answer right now. I know this was... Um, again, rewritten, based. And this was actually part of our original policy that was passed a couple of years ago, but I'd be happy to research. Yeah, because I, yeah, I didn't make that, I mean, unless somebody else has more clarification, it just didn't make any sense to me. I can't help you with that one. <laughs> okay, and then um, on number two, uh, you have C, which is sexual harassment, and then number two, it just says examples of sexual harassment include, but are not limited to, and it's felt like it maybe it would be more accurate to say may include, but not limited to, because there's, you know, it's talking about a reasonable person to be so severe, pervasive, and objectively offensive. So it seemed as if if you say include, then all of those A through J, if you have any of that at all, that it would mean sexual harassment, whereas it seemed like may gave rise to the fact that it that it's a possibility, but not necessarily, because again, you're talking about a reasonable person rising to be so severe, pervasive, and objectively offensive that it would um, effectively deny a person, et cetera. But, so I was just suggesting maybe including may after the harassment, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm agreeing with Helen yeah. about um, policy statement. We don't have an is, we, that, that this we might have to table if we don't have an answer. Yeah, right there's now. a couple things. Yeah, that's right. I don't understand why that is there either, either since we already have a, a policy on discrimination. So uh, I make a motion to table the Title IX policy to with our, to further August, review. To try to get it back on our, not try, our August, suit for our August meeting. Further. Okay. I have a motion to pol have a table second policy. To table this second. second. Okay, I have a motion to table until August uh, to get information back on this policy. All this, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And this is a reference to E under the policy statement, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. My name is Michael Page. I am a curriculum supervisor and I am 
bringing to you for second read the student nutrition health and wellness policy and the student and nutrition and wellness regulation that is 640 and 640.1 and I'm here to answer any questions in regards to that policy I had a question under the policy statement yes because we're talking about the purpose is to ensure that all staff and students possess it um, the knowledge and skills but in our policy statement a and b we seem to reference just students like under although i'd like to be a young person um i'm not quite as young as some of the others so this is encourages every young person it doesn't um it doesn't seem to encompass everyone and then on b it just talks about healthy eating patterns are essential for students to achieve their full academic potential so again it's if we're talking about our purpose is to encourage staff and students the policy statement seems like it sh could maybe better reflect um something other than students in the, in the bottom the end of that sentence does say all students and staff and the yes, policy the itself yeah. the policy itself yeah. is student, student nutrition. nutrition so it's not for it's not for, it's only well, it's saying the purpose of this policy Policies to ensure that all staff and students. So and remove staff. We, well, we could do that too. I don't. If that's not the purpose, it, um, I'm not sure the egg or the chicken, but one of them because it's. It, that was just me. It didn't seem to address staff in the policy statement. But if we want to take out staff on the purpose, that could be okay too, just to make it the same. We could make this a district nutrition, health, and wellness, and include the staff if that was the purpose of this policy. So it, within the regulations, we do have procedures and regulations for our staff, you know, so things we, that HR would, in the, I'm speaking in regards to HR, but they would, they provide within the regulations have obligations that they would provide services for our staff. So, so, so why don't we just change the name? I think if I can clarify, and it's my client might not be on the right page, but I think what he's saying is that for staff, it doesn't mean for all staff for their nutritional, um, you know, um, health and wellness. It's more for it includes the staff has the knowledge base to support mm -hmm. the student policy or and regulation for student. There, there are some regulation, there is some regulation language that does reference HR providing health and wellness services oh, to staff. staff. Yes, ma'am, okay. that's correct. So then, yeah, I think that's a good a point well taken. It's either a district or it's a student and staff, or it's just a student, then you'd have to drop out and do a different policy and regulation for staff. But if you want to keep it combined, then some of the language has to be more consistent because it, it does state student nutrition, health, and wellness. So it could state district nutrition, health, mm -hmm. and wellness, or student and staff, or staff and student. I mean, I think the intent, the intent is, 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 is good. It's is, right. Is, is right to have the intent that you know what we're doing is providing nutrition, health, and wellness for our students. As far as the staff understanding it and being part of it too. Could we possibly table this to get a clarification at the August meeting? Because honestly, if we're going to make it district, then it should say encourage everyone in every school in our community. That means that we are, we are taking everybody into account. So you know, we need some clarification on this. So it would have to be rewritten if it was going to be for just staff and students. So mm -hmm. can we just remove the staff and keep it as mm -hmm. it is? Yeah, because the, mm -hmm. the points for the students, right? Right. Okay. I mean, basically, yeah. and I, I can see. I think Dr. Salins was saying that there's the staff, or at least certain members of the staff, need to have some kind of baseline education baseline the support. in order to promote it and to fulfill the the policy. So, so maybe we can change making the it district. I think would be going way overboard. Yes, yeah, so I I would agree with that. And so maybe our purpose could be to just we have to break it down to where the staff would have the knowledge to teach it, and the students would be making those lifestyle choices and, and uh, you know if yeah. we're teaching our students to, to make right lifestyle choices it doesn't hurt for staff to understand that and make the same ones no right but then but, we, but our we, primary yeah. duty is for our children mm -hmm. I mean, they, the adults here have already hopefully learned their lesson so michael could you is it in the regulation that specifically I, it's been some time since i read through this so i apologize but is it in the regulation that specifically speaks to our staff yes. as it relates to hr Let me, uh, i can pull that up i'm also looking at the um report card it's the wellstat 3.0 policy um, rubric just to make sure that uh, we are not 
you know, kind of supposed to have staff. Oh, Mr. Patient, so if I can, I if I can interject. Uh, oh, here it is. Regulation speech. elements number four, Department of Human Resource Responsibility. It is A, the Department of Human Resources will address concerns and implement timely strategies and solutions solutions to support the wellness of all staff members. Yeah, so and thereby it no longer becomes just students. Right. The H clearly says employee wellness, nutrition, mm -hmm. education, physical activity, promotion, um, speaks to the, you know, provide to school staff through benefit fair and health fair staff promotion programs, employee assistance programs. So we need to figure it out if this is a district policy or if this is a student policy. Well, I think district, as um, Mark was saying, is a little overreaching. Um, I don't want anyone telling me what my health things are. I'll take care of my health, but um, I can see why we would want our students I think it's going things, just, yeah. I think this policy or regulation is actually just saying that it, it's making those things available to staff members, like an employee assistance program that would be available. So they're not, you don't oh, have no, to no, I understand that when I say in district wise, I right. think that's just. Yeah. Yeah. So, so some of the, some of the. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. And I would just say that, that that language that we're referencing has been policy. This is this is not a new thing that's in here. So the item that I am the item that we're discussing has always been in the past policy. So I'm um, mm -hmm. I can yeah, I hear you. Good evening, uh, Darren Burns, uh, board attorney. I just want to add on to um, what's been said. Keep in mind that at least right now, your regulations, your policies and regulations are uh, separated into sections, for lack of a better description. They're, they're in the 100s, the 200s, 300s, 400s, and your student section is the 600s. So I think the intent of an existing policy that starts with the number six is that it's a student-focused policy. You know, to the extent you want to cover human resource-related issues that are focused on the staff, those would be in a different section, at least under your current organization. That doesn't mean, as you look at the student one, you can't include some expectations of what might have to happen for staff to support your student wellness initiatives, which is, I think if you blended both uh, uh, personnel and students in the same policy, you'll start clouding your actual setup of your entire system of regulations and policies. So I would just, I'd recommend you keep them separate in terms of focus, even if there's some I interplay between the two. And that's a good point because I believe remember uh, the last time I was here 640 and then there is also seven I believe it's 701 701 and 640 generally have said the same thing um, so there is an existing policy outside of this policy that has some of that information within it um, so uh, remember uh, we were looking at repealing that particular one um, and combining them together to create the 640 and certainly if, if, the st if the board's will is for you know the staff to, to revisit this between now and your next meeting and, and clean up any of these references I'm, I'm happy I'm happy to assist in that as well I would recommend it dr. Salins I think so too. I think it needs to be separate well mm -hmm. there's yeah. some things in this regulation and I know that's under your purview I think you should really really read yeah. them because there's some stuff in, in the regulation that I object to yeah so um, please I would ask you to please sure. review that Absolutely. I, though I did have one is okay I have one more question with the policy review um, so it's five policy review just because in, it feels as if we have to, for consistency all of the policies that have come to us they've said we'll review it every three years or every four years whereas this one you're saying triannually and but we've never used quadrennial in the other ones it's usually every three years or every four years so for just consistency sake alone I would say to change it to the every three years because you know we just don't use that we don't that use word. that verbiage in so, any of other policies so the reason that word is in there is because the um the act the health hunger free act of 2010 requires that and when the state gave us our um, feedback in regards to our wellness policy um you know, on our uh, well, well, stat 3.0. They said specifically that that word is required, so that's why that word was in there. Well, the, the word is required. That's fascinating. They, they specifically stated that we it had to say triannual assessment, and we. Um, so I, 
Is okay. that will and shall assessment and then parentheses put every three years. <laughs> yes. So that yeah. there you go. I mean seriously, I'm so that right. does kind of mm -hmm. um, switch you know, mirror what our policies um, are traditionally incorporate. So I, but I think the one thing I think Mr. Burns made it clear, 600 is student policies. And I think when people, you know, we tell somebody, a, a, a parent or whoever, to go on look at our policies, when they go in 600, they're going to look at 600. So they're not going to be looking at staff and other things. So I, even though I, I know some things intertwine, but we probably should try to keep that as mm -hmm. clean as possible. If nothing else, focus on the students. If we need another policy to focus on something else, or refer to another policy at the end, saying per staff, have a, have a different category for that, if that's, necessary. And that's maybe why it was in 700s. Yeah. Right. Um, so we can absolutely, if we want to maintain it in the 600s, we can remove all, you know, at just your do it, discretion. Just do two separate policies with two separate regulations. Mm -hmm. It's probably the cleanest way to do it. Please. But then last on the policy review on C, it was talking about at the very last line it says, which is available at the following website, period. So I was wondering what website you were referencing. So I can't, so um, we were waiting for this to be linked. So when we can link in the actual site where it is located within the um, uh, QACPS website, we were gonna add that in there. So the website's not up and running. You just want, instead of one of the link, you, instead of just writing, you want to make sure there's a live link on it. But. Correct. Okay. So again, it says actively notify households, families, and employees of the availability of the triennial progress report. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're going to have to separate them. Mm -hmm. I think we got to get a motion to table this. Motion to table policy 640 and the coordinating regulation of 640.1 until the August meeting. Second. A motion to second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. We'll make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank Sorry. you. Thank yeah, you. Thank Thanks, you. Michael. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And I think any burns. members that have the, these questions, you should send them into the policy committee or run them through hell and make sure, you know, the staff has good direction too. Um, okay, the next one down is yellow sheet for Title IX. Well, we, 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 did the, we have tabled that. Tabled that one. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just going on. No, but it's on here. here. It's all over. It's just, <laughs> that's says. okay. I'm just trying to read. And then the, the we've done the personnel and the records. personnel records we've already done. Yeah. Yeah. Move right along. Moving yeah. on. Any more public comment? Do we have anybody sitting out there? No one in the hallway. Okay, our future meetings, we will meet next Wednesday. We will start the meet, not the meeting, but we will have a reception for our retired. Yes, uh, at 3 o'clock. At 3 o'clock from 3 to 5 uh, for our retirees and their families. I guess the families are invited to. Yes, absolutely. And all board members that can make it from 3 to 5. And we'll have a work session at 5 o'clock. Uh, and then our next other scheduled work session will be on July the 21st. Do I have any other information for the calls? Any other members have any? I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Thank Good you. Good night.